Well, we're extremely excited to be here. We just got done practicing, and uh, it's great to be back in Dayton. I haven't been here for, uh, let's see, eight years since I worked here for Oliver. It's, it's a great venue. It's a terrific place to play. We're really excited about our game tomorrow night against USC. Right here. Uh, Tim Perrell with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Chaka, can you describe uh, your, the experience for you uh, as a first time head coach in this? And also what you have told your young guys. Uh, do you tell them to embrace this or do you, uh, how to keep them you know, away from the, all the pitfalls of the, everything that goes on with this? Well, in terms of the experience for me, uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm loving it. Uh, it's a chance for our team to play in the most selective tournament in uh, college basketball. So really excited about being here. I'm happy for our staff and our players. But at the same time, we've got big goals uh, coming into this tournament. We're starting with tomorrow night's game. With our younger players, all of our freshmen and sophomores, this is their first trip to the NCAA tournament. Really trying to encourage them to embrace the moment, enjoy every part of it, the travel, the shoot arounds, the, the media obligations, the team meetings, and then of course the game. Uh, obviously it's a lot easier to enjoy the game when you have a positive result. So uh, that's where our focus is. Uh, our team needs to be extremely aggressive and, and really play attacking basketball because when we do that, we're very good. Right here. Coach uh, Baxter Holmes with the LA Times. Uh, what, do you guys carry any kind of uh, chip on your shoulder coming in? Because there, you know, there was a lot of doubt whether you deserved to be in before you got in, and then even after there were a lot of you know, questions raised. I think Gene Smith even had to make a, made a statement about it. So does that, does that affect you guys at all? Like maybe motivate you more to, to prove anything? We use that as motivation with our players. Uh, we have some guys that uh, they love it when people doubt them. It, it really feeds their they're uh, competitive juices, and we have a very, very competitive team. So from a player standpoint, we definitely use that as motivation. Now, personally, I don't really put too much stock into it. You mentioned Gene Smith. They interview the chair of the selection committee every year, and he has to justify who, who they put in the, the uh, tournament every year. And every year there's teams that people pick on and say they should or shouldn't have been in. The reality is all that is just drama surrounding the NCAA tournament. Now the fans, the media love drama. As a coach, as players, it has nothing to do with when the ball goes up in the air tomorrow night at nine o'clock, that drama all goes away. And either we come out and play really well and win, or we don't. And, and, and that doesn't have anything to do with what talking heads are, are, are sitting on TV saying. Rusty Miller with Associated Press. You mentioned drama. USC has had a little drama in the last week or so. I just wondered if you were aware of any of that. First of all, with what happened with the coach being suspended and then their cross-country travel. Uh, no, I'm unaware of the travel. Uh, I was aware that the coach was suspended. Um, I have no idea what happened, nor do I really care. Uh, I, I know that uh, Coach O'Neill is going to coach the game tomorrow night. Have, the utmost respect for him and his coaching staff and their program. So, uh, you know, looking forward to playing against them. But uh, again, anytime you're, you're talking about drama or things surrounding the game, I really don't dwell on it. Arch, you're in the front. <clears throat> Tom Arch, Deacon Dayton. Uh, Shocker, I'm just wondering when you come in this arena or something, this is where you started your D1 basketball and just what, if any special memories come back or anything, what you feel coming back to Dayton, I guess. A lot of special memories. It's, it's an unbelievably special place. And Tom, when, when we came in, we walked down the tunnel and uh, it, it just kind of crossed, the, the, the different games crossed my mind walking down the tunnel with Oliver and, and, and Ron Jersa and Josh Pastorino and Frank Smith because every, every game we would, we would say what we needed to say in the locker room and then we would walk down that tunnel and of course we won a whole lot more than we lost here. Uh, so it, it's a special place and uh, it's a place that I talk about quite a bit. Uh, and now it's nice to actually be back here and, and get a chance to play here. Right here, in front. 
USC has kind of referred you referred to you guys as uh, kind of a Washington type team, and they're you know kind of a run and gun team that you know can shoot a lot of threes, strip steal kind of stuff. Did, from having watched them, is there any kind of team that you faced or teams that kind of compare to their style and their lineup and the way they like to play? Yeah, actually, we've played a lot of teams that have some similarities with USC. Uh, we we really have a lot of respect for USC's physical front court and their ability to rebound on the offensive end. And then their guards are extremely good at getting in the lane, uh, making plays, and they can get hot from outside. So from our league, uh, Drexel is similar to that. Old Dominion has some similarities to their physicality inside, their ability to score around the basket. Wichita State's a team we played in the Bracket Buster who, who has uh, a very imposing front line and some guards that can really play. And then we played UCLA. Uh, early in, in, in the season, in the preseason NIT. Uh, and, and obviously there's some similarities there between those two teams. And they split this season very, uh, in very competitive games. Right here. Um, can, uh, following up on that, can you talk about, one, Jamie's impact this year, and two, the challenge he's going to face with their front line? His impact has been huge for us. Uh, he's been our, obviously, our leading scorer and our leading rebounder, but I think the impact that he's had has gone well beyond numbers. And you're talking about a guy who averaged about eight and five last year. So not only is he our best player this year, our most valuable player, but he's our most improved from last year to this year. What he's able to do for us is we're able to play offensively through him. And he, even though he doesn't bring the ball up, he's somewhat of a point forward for us because if teams want to double team him, he can make plays for his teammates. And if he gets single coverage, then we encourage him to go score as much as we possibly can. And uh, we're going to get him the ball as much as we can in this game. I think USC does a phenomenal job of getting the ball inside. We need to do that as well. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens from there. Can you talk about just the matchup he's going to face here at USC? Well, it's a great matchup. Uh, I think. Physically, he's not as tall uh, as either their starting big, Stevenson uh, or Vucevic. Um, I might have butchered his name there. If I did, I apologize. Uh, I got it right? He's a phenomenal player. I mean, he, uh, this is a, I didn't even, uh, I'd never seen him play until this year. Uh, but he, he's terrific. And, and they do a great job of getting him the ball over and over and over again. And the thing that's so dangerous about him is, it doesn't matter if he catches it on the block or five, six feet off the block. He, he's very, very effective scoring the ball, and he's a pretty good passer as well if you double. Jamie, I think, can, can present some problems uh, if he's aggressive and if he's attacking. Uh, the way that he played in our game against George Mason a little over a week ago, that needs to be his mindset going into this game. And if it is, he'll be fine. You guys shoot a lot of threes. I'm, I'm just curious, uh, is, that, is that mentality, uh, you know, because we've seen that in the tournament some years where teams, you know, who, they can get really hot from behind the arc and take out anybody, and then they might go cold the game. And I think Kent State a few years ago. But anyway, it's a long, you know, dating back. And I'm wondering, it, how do you feel that style kind of carries throughout the tournament? And it's obviously worked well for you, you know, all season long, you know, obviously. But I'm curious, you know, coming in to something like this on this stage. Well, that's a good question, I, I think. And people always say, if you, if you live by the three, you die by the three. And uh, if that's all we shot, then, you know, you're really playing Russian roulette, you know, going into a game. But I, I think in the games where we've been extremely effective, we've been able to establish a presence inside and then also make shots outside. And that's when we've been at our best. Uh, as recently as beating George Mason in the CIA semifinals. We, we, we did a great job attacking the basket. We got to the foul line. And then we made a lot of shots from outside. Let's face it, when three-point shots go in, that scoreboard moves really fast. And, and that's the best way to win. So uh, we're going to shoot open threes because we have good three-point shooters. But at the same time, it's, it's important that we're aggressive. We get the ball inside, and we got to get to the foul line. 